started fighting when I was 16, 18, turned pro against a guy. I was uh, obviously 0-0. He was 25 and 7. Thought that was a that was a, that was a good idea. Yeah, Edwin Duis, yeah, baby face. Um, didn't turn out the way I planned. Did the first MMA fight or pro fight, and then I joined the Marine Corps. Um, had a blast, man. You know, like I said, that's where we, uh, me and Leith met. George and I met through the Martial Arts Center of Excellence in Quantico. We were both in the Marine Corps together, and uh, I went through as a student. George was already there as an instructor, and him and I met. He was teaching nutrition there at the time. And nutrition had always been a passion of mine. I grew up as a wrestler, cutting weight my entire life. So uh, this business was very near and dear to my heart from the very, very beginning. Um, but once I met George, him and I uh, hit it off right away. We had very similar interests. We're both involved in, in mixed martial arts as well as had a passion for nutrition. So fast forward two years, I became an instructor there as well. Uh, and from there, George and I started to uh, further refine the nutritional curriculum at the Martial Arts Center. Uh, we train together every day. In the Marine Corps, you have uh, weight standards and you have performance standards. So not only do you have to make weight, but you have to perform to a certain uh, certain grade. And um, the first uh, UFC fighter that I worked with was Brian Stan. We were in the Marine Corps together, and uh, you know we always joke, you know, he's like built like a T-Rex, you know, big head, little arms, you know, and uh, he didn't have the reach at 205 uh, when he went to the UFC. Um, so we dropped him down to 185 and asked for my help. And then um, introduced me to John Jones, and you know, I didn't, I had no idea who he was at the time. You know, he obviously wasn't the, the name he, he is now. But uh, one thing led to the next, and uh, next thing you know, we're calling people. People are calling us, asking for uh, for cuts and things like that. You know, the really it just started out as a, a kind of a passion project for us. You know, George was already working with a few fighters at the time, and he really took me on uh, and was a mentor to me. He really built me up in this business and taught me everything I know. We started back then, I think we had, I, I, don't, I don't know how many athletes at the time, a handful of athletes now to where I think we're roughly at 40% of the UFC roster uh, as clients in a matter of uh, two years. So, A lot of fighters usually fly in on the, the Tuesday if they, if they weigh in on Friday. And that's when the actual cut starts. It cuts, you know, the cut starts about three days prior to the actual weigh-in. Um, that, that that means we start pulling out the sodium, start pulling back a little bit on the you know, the post workout carbohydrates. I think the process that we use uh, is is very different and, and a lot more efficient because what we do is based solely in science. You know, we don't t leave anything up to guesswork. It isn't just our opinion. This is something that we have through a ton of study and trial and error really honed in. We noticed. <laughs> right before our weight cut now, so we're going to do a real simple chicken thigh. There's some good fat content to it, so we're going to keep it really simple. Uh, we're making a little pineapple and watermelon salsa of sorts, and that'll be for uh, Anthony Sellers before he cuts weight. Most athletes are, are, especially when they're used to the very archaic ways of cutting weight where they starve themselves, dehydrate themselves really early, um, they are, are terrified the first time they work with us because it doesn't make sense that like you have a chef delivering you like a, a, a five-star meal that's plated like you're at you know a Michelin star restaurant during a weight cut. Like it, does, it seems counterintuitive that you're eating the best meal you've ever had when you should be losing weight and somehow it all works, you know? And through that process, we've managed to gain new clients at every event and continue to grow and grow and grow. Yeah. Yes. Turn on the hot water and uh, crank the heat up in here. I'm going to shut this room off and then try to get like the ambient air temperature nice and hot in the steam room. And then that way when Mike comes in, we just chill out in here for a second, start to bring his, his core temperature up just a little bit. And that way it's not, you're not going from like cold to hot like that. You kind of slowly work into it. There is no one that works for Lockhart and Leith that has not cut weight. It's a, it's a prerequisite to be a part of our company. If you do not know what that process feels like, how can you effectively coach and, and, and help an athlete um, if you can't empathize a bit with what they're experiencing? A lot of times it's not knowing what to say, but a lot of times it's knowing when to shut up, you know, because like being able to relate to these guys. Sometimes these guys just want to be left alone and during that cut, and it's extremely important to know the psychology of it. What we're trying to do is start to uh, eventually kind of 
for lack of a better term, trick your body into uh, pulling sodium, right? So 10 days out, we start the water load. Guys will drink anywhere from a gallon and a half to two gallons of water at a time. The idea behind that is as you're increasing, you know, your body is always trying to find homeostasis, right? So as you're increasing, uh, the amount of fluid or the amount of water you're drinking, um, but not increasing the amount of sodium. As you're drinking that water and you're going to use the bathroom, you, that amount of sodium is dropping and the water is going up and that sodium is dropping. So you're decreasing sodium um, as you're increasing water. On Tuesday, once we pull it, that, that sodium out, so um, by fluid loading early, we're getting your body in the process of, of doing that. So. 156. Nice. Guess was 1.5 over, so they took him back. If you miss weight with an entitled fight, you have an extra two hours. So you just take him right back upstairs, you put him in the bath, put him in the you know the little burrito wrap we do, and you got two hours to try and make that extra pound or two pounds, whatever it is. So. <laughs> We don't have a perfect record, you know? And I almost take more pride in that than being like, hey, every one of our guys has made weight. It's like, I, I take pride that I'm like, no, we have to we have to change this because this isn't safe. This is gonna take away from the longevity of their career. This is gonna take away the longevity of their life. We are paid to, to get somebody on weight, but if somebody makes weight and they have uh, issues later in life, you know, that doesn't really, doesn't really mean a whole lot. We would rather just come on, have that athlete not make weight, maybe take some criticism, it's fine, but know that our athlete is, is doing it as safe as he possibly can. This, honestly, is the most important part. The cut's important, but the rehydration, that's, that's what dictates the fight. You know, I did a lot of bad cuts back in the day. I mean, I fought at heavyweight, light heavyweight, middleweight, welterweight, and, you know, I made, the, I made these cuts, and I realized, like, man, I got good at cutting weight, but, Got to, got to rehydrate, you know. So um, we put a lot of effort into that, and, and uh, that's a lot what we pride ourselves on now. I'm signing all the certifications for um, all of the Friday class um, people. So all the students that came in from Monday to Friday to get certified for uh, the Ultimate Fighter finale. So we have two classes running this week. So these are all the certificates for everybody who made it all the way through and passed everything. <laughs> You know, we saw this huge lack of education in what we do, and, and it really it was more, I think, a, a matter of just going out to the fights every week and, and talking to coaches, talking to other trainers, and, and saying, listen, like, we really have uh, what we think is the right answer to this problem in weight cutting, and, and why not share that? I think the way George and I look at it is, no, we, we really do think we've got something that's going to help athletes do this sometimes dangerous, sometimes unhealthy method of getting down to their, their weight and, and we are able to do it in a, in a much healthier, much safer manner. So why not share that with the entire community? There's a lot of people out there that want to learn this stuff. And we're getting people from Australia, from Ireland, from London, and we sit there and we, we, we try to teach them everything we know so they can apply this um, to their, their part of the globe and help out amateurs and uh, whoever else they're working with. I mean, we want to transcend MMA, but within MMA, we want to have the entire UFC roster, ideally. I mean, we would like to build an entire community that this is solely their expertise, so that there is no fighter that, from, from amateur, very beginner, all the way on to the absolute pinnacle, be able to educate every one of those athletes in the most efficient way to make weight, because it's one of the most dangerous and tr taxing, trying parts of the sport. You know, we want to get out there and uh, obviously, Stay in the MMA world. We love, love what we do. We love the MMA world, but I'd say like get in the schools. You know, like you start educating, you know, kids on the way up. I would love to to take it to a place where we build a community full of really educated nutritionists, and then transcend on into uh, other areas of nutrition and and uh, help spread the idea of effective performance nutrition and wellness. So, and that's really what we're passionate about. We just happen to do it in this place where people beat the hell out of each other. <laughs>